that's uh, welcome to week six, time two. We're starting a new topic now, uni new unit called service structure and function. Okay, so that's lesson two. The first lesson, just a quick review. We talked about how, yeah, well, how we use microscopes, power for magnification, microscopes, and things like that. I hope you remember that. So basically, cells they are, well, they are the smallest living unit. They're not the small, the smallest living things, but the smallest living units. Okay, most of them are microscopic. For example, if you talk about uh, animals, that's a single-celled uh, animal, okay, and and a type of amoeba. So therefore, it's a single cell. It's a sing. It's it's this very very small living unit, okay. And when you go to a larger scale, for example, uh, onion cells, yes, that's what you see, okay, a bunch of cells together, forming something we call epidermis, which is basically skin, okay. That's the skin of the onion cell in there. Uh, the discovery of cells, um, um, it's something quite recent If you in, a, in, a, in time. This guy here with this funny face, his name is Robert Hooke. He, he lived in the mid-1600s, uh, okay? And he was trying with uh, telescopes at the very start of his, uh, his uh, scientific career, and he decided to swap the lenses and see what you could see. With the lens is inverted, okay, very good idea. He was observing sleeve of cork, and he saw uh, some empty boxes, and they coined the term cell. He published those results, and they called the term cell, and that's why uh, cells are called cells, basically, okay. Uh, this guy, funny story, not funny, not a so funny story, but this guy, he um, he was the art, uh, basically the arch rival from, uh, of uh, Isaac Newton. Okay, so they had very, very, very bad uh, relationship, and uh, and they fought over over many, many years about who coined the term gravity first. Was it uh, uh, Newton or was it Hooke? Hooke died poor and and uh, without much recognition. Okay, because uh, he chose a very horrible enemy, which is Isaac Newton, one of the greatest scientists of all time. But Robert Hooke, he he has a space in our hearts as well. Okay. He's very good with springs, so go there and check his work. Uh, so there's more discovery of cells there, and uh, uh, Theodore Schwann and Matthias Scheidlin, they came up in 1839 with the concept that all living things are made of cells. Okay, pretty uh, important concept. So this co a concept that has been around for some time. Okay. Um, next, so. Principles of the cell theory. So all living all living things are made of cells. Okay. So far, so far, all things that are alive have a living unit in it. Okay. So far, we don't know about life in other planets if they are cell based or if they have something different. But the the, the smallest living unit of structure and function of organisms it, it's called a cell. Okay. And it's it's a, a it's a um, Something that you have to have in mind is the second line that that says that says that all cells arise from pre-existing cells. Okay, so basically you need to have a original cell. The cell must divide or reproduce in order to have the secondary cell. Something that we'll learn over time in this course. That's a very good example there of of, of cells. Those are lung cells. Okay, they're lung cells. Actually, I'm sorry, they are liver cells. And they have pretty much, if you go and check uh, cell structure and function, animal cells they have, including ours, they have similar structure, okay, and similar function, okay. Cell size, we're talking about very small sizes in here, okay. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but at the very bottom here of the video, you have on the bottom left-hand side, one millimeter, okay, one millimeter. Then you go all the way to 0.5 half nanometer. Remember that na a nanometer is one billionth, one billionth of a meter. So divide a meter in a billion bits, and then you get to nanometers. Okay, so viruses, they are tiny, 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 tiny uh, entities. They are not considered to be alive, okay? They are not considered living things, and they are not made of. No, they are not made of cells. Okay, the HIV virus at the very top there, um, 100 nanometers. The polyvirus, 30 nanometers. 
nanometer, sorry. And the DNA molecule, two nanometers in diameter. Small, really small. But when you talk about the um, human blood cell, we're talking about here at seven to, uh, to eight micrometers in diameter. Okay, now you know okay, how to calculate the area of a circle. Human blood cell is roughly a circle, roughly. You could calculate the surface area of a blood cell, human blood cell, right now, knowing that the, the human blood cell is, let's say, seven and a half uh, micrometers in diameter. Okay, you could do that right now. You could calculate the area of a HIV virus, of a polyvirus, because you have the skills now. Okay, that's how it's uh, important to know that. Those are uh, two types of cells that we'll be discussing during the, this course, this unit. Okay, so here you have a human, a human cell, so human cheek cell. It's basically 50 um, micrometers, 50 micrometers in, 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 in height, whilst a plant cell is double that, so it's 100 micrometers. So plant cells, remember, we were discussing the difference be between a plant cell between blood and, uh, and, and, and chlorophyll, which is the, the, the blood that you can find inside plants, and it's basically the color, okay? So red, human, uh, uh, human cells are usually red because they have iron in it, and the plant cells, they're usually green because they've got magnesium in it, okay? Characteristics of all cells, uh, they, uh, this is something that you really need to pay attention, okay? Uh, this is an important term. They have a surrounding membrane. Therefore, yeah, they are protected from exterior uh, threats. They have something called the protoplasm, uh, cell contents in a thick fluid. Organelles, they are basically organs. Okay, The structures inside uh, a cell, they do a number of different functions. And the control center with the DNA, which we call a nucleus. Okay, no need to be scared here. Okay, no need to be scared. So this is an image that uh, I will give you some time uh, to digest. Give you some time to digest because it, it can be overwhelming at the very start. Okay, so in this image, you can see two types of cells. A plant cell at the very uh, the left side and an animal cell on the right side. Although different, they have uh, many things in common. Okay, one of them is called the cell membrane. Okay, which is uh, this thin layer that encloses the cell. It protects the cell. They have something called the nucleus, where the DNA, in other words, your genetic information is stored. They have something called cytosol as well, which is just it's a jelly-like substance inside the cells that keep things uh, uh, going. And now we, have, we go to some differences. P plant cells, they will have something called vacuole. Okay, you can read this. Uh, I'll, I'll be giving you a handout, and you you have time to un fully understand what this thing is. Chloroplasts, okay, they they control they contain a substance called chlorophyll, and they are vital for photosynthesis. And they have something called also a cell wall. Uh, animal cells don't have that cell wall, but plant cells they do. There is a reason for that, and you will get to know that very soon.